here we have a range and we have worked through the understanding of how to, to create a range and what that range means for our purposes of analyzing and making meaning and presenting results from a collection of data. So we have made a range here and our next uh, job or our next responsibility in this, in this process is to actually uh, take this range and all the data inside the range and we're going to make a pivot table. Now pivot tables are simply interactive tables of information that summarize the data that we've we've selected in our range and this allows us as the users of this uh, process to explore and analyze different ways of looking at this data. And then from there we can then create visuals and we can create presentation materials to help explain and support the conclusions that we find. And so to do this, I've selected the range already in a previous video. And now we're going to come up here to insert, as you can see right here, we're going to come up to insert. And once you've clicked insert, you can see the pivot table option. So select the pivot table option, and it's going to, to only select or only uh, manage the data that we've selected in our range. So I'm going to click pivot table and we're going to go ahead and put this on a new sheet and the sheets are down here so that it keeps it clean uh, for the main data or the, uh, the, the uh, starting data will stay clean. So we hit create. And so now we have uh, a new spreadsheet down here, uh, pivot table one, and then we can start sort of playing around and figuring out how we can put these variables and the data that they represent into a meaningful uh, visual. Uh, and then we can then take that summary uh, here and this sheet and then create our visuals. So we wanna start out with rows. Rows will help us identify the different X and Y, Z uh, axis on our graphs and our visuals. So we're gonna go to rows and you can say, see over on the right here, we have a pivot table table editor. Now, if you don't see this, you can unclick this and you can select inside our pivot table and you can see that there's a little edit button. So you click on the edit and you can then access the pivot table editor again if you lose it. Now, over here are our column headers. And so these column headers can then just be dragged and dropped right into the rows. Or if you don't want to do that, if you're using a different um, the version, you can just hit add and you can select those as well. I'm just going to go ahead and use the drag and drop feature and we'll drag and drop. And now we have our rows. So in that range, we have three different grade levels that are actually responding to our prompts in those 20 cells. Now there are several other, uh, grade levels and those are represented in the ranges that are the cells that are not included in this range. So it's only picking up those three grades cause that's all that that's in that range. Now, once we've identified that, now we have to consider what are the values that we want to populate in this table. And to do that, we can just go over here and we have our column headers from those four questions. And we can just go ahead and select the variable and drag it down into the values. And now you can see that if I come over to the pivot table, I select here and you can see sum of classroom and extracurricular activities. Now notice that the word sum appears. So it's starting to aggregate the, our data, meaning it's collecting and it's making some sort of meaning. In this sense, it is adding all those values up to show us the ultimate or the final tally of that. So we're just summing, we're adding all the values up that are represented in these rows based off of these classes. I come back here. All right, so we have our first variable. Now we can go ahead and add our second variable. And again, here we have a count A. Now that may not be exactly what we want because it's looking at the class section, okay? And count is just the, the number uh, that the, the uh, variable appears. 
Uh, so let's say we don't want that. Obviously, that's not going to make any sense because we're counting the uh, grouping variables over here. That's not going to help us make any sense with the data that's summing uh, the classroom extracurricular response. So in order to address this issue, well, we can just go ahead and simply click the X. So we have these aggregate functions, as you see, what the function is being created when it looks at the data. So we have the sum, we have the count A. And if I come down here, you can see that we have sum, count A, uh, count, just use count A for now, um, average, so it averages the numbers that are, are appearing, max, minimum, and these are other, uh, maybe not so, um, maybe not so readily used or not, not so regularly used other aggregate functions here. So basically, we're just looking at average, count, and s count A, or in sum. All right, so let's move over here, and let's say we want to change the sum of a classroom, uh, this sum of responses, to the average of the responses. So instead of, obviously, it's just going to take the amount of submissions, okay? So you got to take the total, the sum, and then it's going to divide by the amount of submissions to get the average. Now, we don't have to do that on our own. We just come down here, we select the arrow key next to the aggregate function, and we're going to say average, and you'll notice that our numbers have totally changed. In fact, we have decimal points and we have decimal places and it's giving us an exact average. Now, that's way too more specific than we want. So we're just gonna come up here, make sure we select our column and make this clean up this data a little bit. Okay, so I can add, maybe let's just go ahead and add two decimal points to the right. Okay, now, once we've done that, we have one category we're averaging all right so let's go down and let's add a few more values here we have this and then we'll go ahead and add a third one and you can see it defaults to the sum so that's okay we can just change that after we get there so let's select average and you'll see that we have to sort of do some uh, formatting here with the number system uh, that it's appearing so you can just select the range so we can just say C to E, and then we can minimize uh, or reduce the amount of decimal points that are showing to the right of the decimal. Okay, so now we have our grade six, nine, 10. We have our responses in the average aggregate. And then down below, you can see we have actually the t grand total. So it's averaging the totals for this as well. If we don't want to see that, we can just come over here to the rows, uh, the variable that we put in, the grouping variable, and we can redo, just unclick that and not show the totals. That's up to you and your purposes as you play with the pivot table. All right, so this is how we create a pivot table. Our next video, we'll take a look at how we can take this aggregate data that we've collected into this pivot table and played around with in order to uh, create a visual or a graph of this data that can help us draw conclusions and then explain the conclusions that we come to based off of all the data that we've selected in our range previously.